Hello. Well, today you join me at what can only be described as a gardener's paradise. Whether it's a flower or a vegetable, they have it all right here. But then again, this isn't any normal garden. Welcome to Mr. Father Gill's Trial Grounds. Yes, good morning, Hello, sir. Hello, sir. How are you doing? Very good. Welcome good. back. Welcome Thank back. You. Thank you. I always love working with Ed because he sort of changed his life completely a few years ago. <laughs> um, and and you've, got, you've got an award-winning blog called Agents of Fields. That's right. And yeah. it's, all, it's kind of like the modern-day... Good life. The good life. Isn't it? Barbara and Tom. We yeah. are out in the next stuff like leading the good life. We gave up careers in London. Yeah. And now we are building kitchen gardens, gardening, cooking, you know, things that a lot of people dream about. Yeah. People that might be watching this and think, I fancy gardening. I love gardening. Is it fair to say you're never too old if that's the career for you? No. Ah, no, 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 no. If you, if you love it, then yeah, it doesn't matter what age you are. Yeah. It really doesn't. Um, and the industry needs people, yeah. being honest. So. And I pot it up into a nice bit of multi-purpose compost, water it in well, uh, let it sit maybe on a conservatory or in your greenhouse, just get it established. But it is hardy. It will go outside. He will happily sit outside all winter, and then next spring you'll see those pinkish little buds form, and then you know you're onto a winner. Of course, not everyone is lucky enough to have a garden, an allotment, or even a growing space, which is why sometimes you have to think outside the box with hanging baskets, containers, and pots. And right here on the trial ground, they thought about that planting and they've done their own. No chemicals, it's a natural process. Mm -hmm. You're taking the plant mm -hmm. and then you're taking a rootstock, which is like the power pack, mm -hmm. right. and you're, you're putting them, them graft together. them together, yeah. okay. and then that power pack will sustain, feed, nurture, and it will give you this abundance of fruit and veg. So it's a plant with an inbuilt power pack, yeah. which is giving you quicker growth, earlier ripening. That's right. How much more crops? Was it 75? 75. 75%. I mean, 75 the, ter the tomatoes will give you mm. 75 more percent. Mm -hmm. mm. The cucumbers, you'll be picking them every other day. Wow. Finally, at last, we're here. We're here well, with the great man himself, Mr. Toby Bucklin. Hello, sir. Hello. Thank you for taking the time. Pleasure, yeah. Um, We'll keep it, I know you're a busy man, but this is a big year for you. It's the fifth year, I understand. Yeah, yeah, um, we've had a lot of cake. <laughs> <laughs> but I was just wondering, could you take us back five, maybe six years and tell us how it all came about? Well, it was, the, we had a nursery and we wanted to do more open events. And um, I was being interviewed by uh, Alan Lewis, who owns Country Garden right. magazine. As summer draws to a close and crops are being harvested, you may notice gaps now appearing in your vegetable beds. Normally, there are two options. One, sow a crop for the autumn and winter months, or two, prep your bed and leave it until the next spring. If you opt for the latter, then you may want to think about green manures. We've got an autumn winter mix. Again, all you're doing is sowing it around that time and then come early spring, say two weeks before you're ready to plant your first vegetable, cut it down and chop it into the bed. And that's it. Without a doubt, I've had a great time here today. And all being well, this time next year, it'll be business as normal. And I won't be the only one who'll be able to enjoy these wonderful gardens. But for now, thank you for watching.